Deputy Lucinda Creighton, and is to ask the Minister for Justice and Equality uh, regarding the miscarriage of justice suffered by Harry Gleeson, executed in 1941. You have four minutes, Deputy. Um, thank you, Cahirlach. I'm disappointed to see that the Minister hasn't um, shown up into the Chamber for this um, debate. Um, uh, as the House will be aware, on the 1st of April um, of this year, the Department of Justice released on their website a press statement announcing the Minister's intention to grant a posthumous pardon to Harry Gleeson, a man who was executed at the hands of the state on the 23rd of April 1941 for the murder of Mrs Mary McCarthy, a murder which he did not commit. Um, it has been seen as many, by many as one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in the Irish state. In August 2013, this case was referred by, um, uh, to the Attorney General's office and then reviewed uh, by Shane Murphy, senior counsel, who produced a report in January of this year. The Department of Justice has not, for some, some inexplicable reason, um, released this report to the public. Um, it seems that there's been an attempt by the Department to undermine the significance of this case and to play it down. Evidence uh, which has come to light since the execution of Mr. Gleeson points to deliberate collusion um, by members of Angar the Shia Khan in relation to his conviction. Um, it is one of the key pieces of evidence which makes this conviction wrong, and yet it received little or no attention in the press release uh, which was issued by the department in respect of the pardon. In particular, the evidence of a fraudulent entry made in a firearms reg register um, in 1983, a prosecution witness, uh, Mr. Michael Leamy revealed that on the afternoon the body was discovered and reported by Gleeson, two plainclothes detectives came into the hardware store where Mr. Leamy worked and ordered a fraudulent entry be inserted in the firearms register for the purpose of a particular type, um, for the purchase of a particular type of ammunition by Gleeson's uncle. This entry has been located and it is available uh, to the public to view. This evidence was submitted to the Department of Justice by uh, Mr. Marcus Burke, a former parliamentary draftsman who wrote a book entitled Murder at Marley Hill uh, about this case in 1993. So I suppose the question has to be begged why, it, why it's taken 22 years um, to issue the pardon and why now. In the press statement on the 1st of April, the minister made no reference to the work of Mr. Marcus Burke. It did not highlight the statement by Mr. Leamy or mentioned that Garthy approached him on the day the body was found. The statement suggested merely that the firearms register, which was not produced um, during the trial, despite, um, despite several requests by the trial judge um, on a number of occasions, tended not to support the prosecution's case. That's the only reference uh, in the report. In a separate press release on the 31st of March, a day before the Harry Gleeson press release, uh, the Minister uh, for Justice announced that she was releasing a report of a similar case which had been reviewed by senior counsel into the death of Father Niall, Niall Malloy. Uh, and I would like to hear uh, from the Minister why in, um, in this case the report was released, but in Harry Gleeson's case the report um, is somehow deemed to represent a confidential legal advice to the Attorney General and the Minister. It just, it is completely incongruous and it really doesn't add up that one report can be deemed worthy of publication and another report not. And clearly, the contents of one report is something that uh, the Department of Justice wishes um, to suppress. This case has, um, has bemused, it has concerned people for many years. Um, it goes far beyond a merely unsafe conviction, as the Minister has stated in her press release. It was a deliberate miscarriage of justice, and it should be seen as such by the Minister and by her department. They should acknowledge it, and it should, uh, um, it should be made uh, clear on the public rec record. Mr uh, Murphy's report should be released to the public. Um, it is in the, in the interests of the public to see it, and the Minister for Justice should certify that this was a, a miscarriage of justice and make a full and frank apology to the families and to all of the people who have been affected by the case, which has lingered on since 1940. Um, 
and I am speaking um, on behalf of the Minister for Justice and Equality, who does regret that she can't be here today because of um, uh, other official uh, commitments. I am a Minister of State at the Department of uh, Justice, however, uh, and she is uh, very grateful to the Deputy for raising this uh, very important matter in the House today, as you said, and as you're aware. Um, uh, the Minister did announce uh, that the Government had decided to advise the President to exercise his right of pardon under Article 13.6 of the Constitution in respect of the conviction in 1941 uh, of Harry Gleeson for the murder of um, Ms Mary McCarthy. Um, concerns had been raised for many years, as you have said, in relation to, to Mr Gleeson's conviction. Uh, most recently, in foot of a submission from the Innocence Project Ireland, and the Justice for Harry Gleeson uh, group, the Attorney General directed uh, that the case would be reviewed um, by Mr Shane Murphy SC. And Mr Murphy did conclude that in his opinion there were deficiencies in the conviction such as to render it unsafe. Uh, the Attorney concurred with this assessment and did advise that the deficiencies were such as to warrant the Government recommending to the President that he exercise his right of pardon. Uh, the arrangements for this recommendation um, to be put in, into effect are being finalised uh, at present. Uh, Mr Murphy outlined a number of factors which led to him forming his opinion, and these were set out in detail in the statement which the Minister issued when she announced the Government decision in relation to the pardon. Uh, the Minister is aware of suggestions that Mr Murphy's advice should be published, and you have repeated uh, Deputy Creighton those, De Deputy Creighton, those um, uh, suggestions today. Um, however, uh, the Minister has advised uh, that it is not proposed uh, to do so, uh, as the legal advice is provided to the Minister and to the Attorney General. Uh, in this regard, the Minister wishes to emphasise that the examination carried out by Mr Murphy was not intended to be an inquiry designated to establish all of the facts surrounding the conviction of Mr Gleeson or indeed the murder of uh, Ms McCarthy. Uh, the intention in carrying out the exa examination was focused on determining whether a case had been made uh, or not for a pardon. To this end, the statement which the Minister issued following the Government decision sets out uh, in detail the basis for the conclusion uh, that Mr Gleeson's conviction was unsafe. And the Minister's statement was prepared with the assistance uh, of Mr Murphy, Mr Shane Murphy, and it fully uh, and publicly outlined the basis for the Government's decision. Uh, there are no doubt, it is true to say, that there are unanswered questions concerning Ms McCarthy's murder and indeed the circumstances surrounding Mr Gleeson's conviction. Uh, but seeking to come to a determination on these uh, matters at this remove um, would not be unfortunately warranted uh, or feasible. Uh, and deciding, while deciding to recommend Mr Gleeson's pardon, uh, the Government is exercising the only available remedy uh, to clear his name and in the hope that it will also provide uh, some suitable tribute to his memory. Um, the Minister would also like to emphasise that this is a, an exceptional course of action, uh, which is only the fourth time uh, um, pardon in the history of the State and the first that has been granted posthumously. So, in conclusion, uh, the Minister would like to again underline that this uh, is a matter of the very greatest regret um, that a man was convicted and executed in circumstances which are now considered uh, to be unsafe. Uh, equally, the Government also does acknowledge uh, and regrets that this leaves unresolved the question of the murder of Ms McCarthy, which deprived her young family, of course, of their mother. Uh, and the Government has expressed its sympathy with both families. Uh, and all those affected by this crime uh, and the subsequent uh, wrongful conviction. Now call Deputy Lucinda Creighton for a um, Thanks, Lasky and Corla. Um, and I, I thank the Minister of State um, for coming into the House and for uh, providing um, remarks on behalf of the Minister for Justice. But it is frustrating, I must say, Lasky and Corla, um, because I can't actually get any satisfaction on the points that I've raised because um, the Minister isn't here to to speak and I assume that she has intimate knowledge of this which I don't expect the Minister of State in fairness to, to have. Um, but I, one very fundamental question I think and one very reasonable question uh, which, um, which the family is concerned and which I think the public at large have a right to have an answer to is why was it deemed appropriate to, pub to publish the report 
uh, into the Father Niall Malloy case, uh, but not appropriate to publish the report into the Harry, Harry Gleeson case. They're very similar cases. I follow both of them closely. Um, but one report is deemed to be legal advice, essentially advice, privileged advice between um, uh, Mr. Murphy uh, and the uh, Attorney General, the Minister for Justice, and the other is deemed not to be. That is incongruous. There is no explanation for it, uh, other than logically one concludes that it is desirable on the part of the Minister for Justice and the Department of Ju Justice to suppress one report um, and to publish the other. I think that that is deeply concerning, deeply worrying, um, and I, I would like to have an explanation from the Minister for Justice as to why there is a, a, a differ differentiation between the two reports. It, it just, to my mind, is illogical, and unfortunately, I don't expect the Minister of State to be able to answer that, um, and the Minister really should be here to answer that. I, I think that's a really important point. Um, I don't think it's true to say that the only um, the only solace or the only, um, the only step uh, possible that could be provided by the Minister for Justice or by the Government is a pardon. Um, I think uh, certification uh, and acknowledgement that this was a miscarriage of justice uh, would be appropriate in addition to the pardon. Uh, the reality is that an innocent man lost his life at the hands of the state because of a miscarriage of justice, and it should be acknowledged as such. Uh, I realise that this is a number of decades ago, 1941 is, is, a, is um, a long time ago, but many people suffered, uh, not least uh, the individual at the heart of this, um, uh, Mr Harry Gleeson. Uh, and I think that the state should acknowledge that this was a miscarriage of justice. I think that the public have a right to see the contents of Mr Murphy's report. And it may very well be the case that an independent inquiry is required uh, to fully establish the facts behind this case. It may very Thank well you. be the case. But unfortunately, it's very difficult for members of this House or indeed members of the public to make that adjudication. We're simply uh, expected to take the word of the minister um, or the word of the government uh, rather than being able to judge for ourselves. Thank you. This minister has two minutes to conclude. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Deputy. Can, can I, at the first um, uh, instance, say that, that, that I will communicate that specific uh, question uh, to the minister um, um, to see as if uh, to see if there, there is in fact uh, uh, some clarification as to why there may be a, a rational, rationale or an explanation as, as if it is the case, and I don't know that it is, uh, that these are similar cases where, where they have been treated differently. Um, with respect to the, to the, to the full inquiry, um, uh, the minister has determined that the facts of the case would not warrant um, uh, would not warrant a full inquiry uh, at, the, at this remove. But can I also say that, um, that further correspondence has been recently received by the Minister uh, and she has uh, asked her officials to examine this uh, and again refer it to the Attorney General's office. I suppose the Minister would like to point out that while the relatives in question had not been previously engaged with her um, with respect to, to, to the case. Other relatives who form part of the Harry Gleeson group were in regular contact uh, and they have welcomed uh, the government decision as, as have many of those who campaigned in relation uh, to this case um, in, in, in recent years. Um, the Minister does hope that all concerned can accept the government's decision in this matter uh, as an expression of a, a genuine and sincere desire to address the long-standing concerns both about uh, the conviction and that the presidential pardon will be seen as the best way to clear his name and to provide a suitable tribute to his memory. But as I say, there has been some further information which the Minister um, and her officials are examining and referring uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the Attorney General's office. I'm not appraised of the specific um, information, um, but um, I take the point about having, um, uh, you know, being required to have an answer to the specific point you've asked, uh, and I will ask um, the department to make sure that they provide that in whatever form that is. Um, let's see. Good morning, last time. Good morning, sir. That concludes topical issues.